Hey there, tech fans. Rick here from the O-Ray team with an overview of the UHD44-EX230-K 4x4 HDMI matrix switcher. This product was designed to make it very simple for you to share four different HDMI media sources with four remote locations at distances up to 100 meters away in full 4K ultra high definition resolution over a single Cat5e, Cat6, or Cat7 cable. And because the product is a matrix, you can send the same input to all four outputs simultaneously or different inputs to different outputs depending on your needs. And you can do that using the buttons on the front of the unit, the included remote control, or through software. The product also provides local loopback functionality where you can actually enjoy the content here at this location while simultaneously broadcasting it to the remote locations. Also included is audio extraction capabilities that will actually strip the audio from each of the inputs that it's sending to the remote location and allow you to pass that here locally to a sound bar or home theater system for better quality audio. Audio. Now, if you need to support more inputs and more outputs, there is a larger model of this available. It's the UHD88-EX230-K, and that will support six remote locations and two loopback functions here. Now, included with the kit is a set of infrared blasters that allow you to capture the remote control signals at those remote locations and pass those back over that same LAN connection to the primary location so you can actually control the content you're watching. Finally, the product employs the very latest in power over cable technology, which means you can power up the transmitter and the power required to run the remote units is sent over that same LAN cable, which greatly simplifies your connections. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to start with an unboxing of the product just to show you everything that's included with the kit, and then I'll explain some of the features and functions the product provides. I'll take a closer look at all the components and explain exactly what they do, and then I'll come back and actually install the product here to show you just how simple it'll be to use it once you get it home. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first pop open the box, you'll find the transmitter unit, a power cord for the transmitter unit, and again, because it's using power over cable, once you plug this in, all the power required for those remote units is passed over that LAN cable. Also included is a connection for a computer. You can program this from a computer and make the choices for input versus output. A remote control, a set of infrared blasters for the receiver units and the transmitter unit. There are four receiver modules. There are brackets for these receiver modules where you can mount them up off the ground and out of the way. There's a set of brackets for the transmitter module as well if you want to mount this up on the wall. There's a warranty card and a full instruction manual that explains everything you need to know about connecting this up to your equipment with diagrams and specifications and everything else required. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll list the features and functions of the product, and then I'll spend a little bit of time taking a closer look at all the components and explaining exactly what they do. The O-Ray UHD44-EX230-K supports virtually all HDMI media devices, including DVD players, cable boxes, laptops, game systems, and streaming media devices like Apple TV and Roku. The product features full support for video resolutions up to 4K at 60 frames a second, local loopback of the content so you can enjoy it at the primary location while broadcasting it to the remote locations, any input can be sent to any output, IR blaster kits are also included for remote control of the media being distributed, and you have complete software control over the input versus output selection. Inside the kit, you'll find the matrix switcher, a power cord, a 9-pin cable you can use to connect this unit to your computer for programmatic control, a set of RS-232 plugs that make connecting to the back of the unit and each of the remote modules very easy, a bracketing system that allows you to mount the unit up off the ground and out of the way, a remote control that you can use to make choices of which input goes to which output, four receiver modules, each of these are identically the same, a set of IR blasters that include five transmitters and six receivers, as well as sticky pads that allow you to mount these to your media devices. You'll also find four sets of brackets that can be used to mount the receiver modules up off the ground, and finally, a warranty card and a full instruction manual that gives you all the details you'll need to connect this up with your own equipment at home. Now let's take a closer look at the receiver modules. There are four of them included with this kit, and each of them feature full metal enclosures, which not only make them extremely durable, but really helps to minimize outside interference from causing any issues with the sensitive electronics inside. On the front of each of the modules on the left-hand side, you'll notice a power indicator. This system employs a technology called power over cable, which means once you plug in the transmitter module and make a LAN connection to any one of these modules, the power required to operate that module is sent over that same LAN cable. And the minute that power is applied, the module will start a power on self-test where it's checking the internal electronics to make sure everything is working fine. Once it passes that test, this light will come on letting you know you're ready to go. On the bottom of the unit, 
and the side of the unit you'll notice ventilation slots that are there to keep the internal electronics at a comfortable temperature. You'll also notice mounting holes on the bottom that can be used with the included bracketing system to mount this module to the bottom of a desk or a nearby wall to get it off the ground and out of the way. On the rear of the module, starting on the left, you'll find a power port. Again, that's redundant because you're using the power over cable technology, but if you decide to use a power supply, that's where you'll plug it in. To the right of that is your LAN connection. This is the cable that connects back to the transmitter unit, and that's the only connection you'll need between this module and the transmitter unit, and that one single cable will transmit audio and video. It'll also transmit power, and it'll send the infrared control signals from that remote location back to the primary location over that single cable. To the right of that is the HDMI output port. You'll connect a short HDMI cable from here to the monitor you're using at this remote location so you can enjoy the content. To the right of that are two infrared blaster connections, infrared in, infrared out, and make sure you use the right module with the right port on the back of this product. And to the right of that is an RS-232 connection port. This unit will also transmit RS-232 signals over that same LAN cable if you decide to use that. Each of these modules are exactly the same, and those are the connections you'll need to make. The kit also includes a collection of infrared blaster modules, and there are two different styles. Even though they look the same, they are different. Each of them have a 3.5mm plug on the end, which is what's used to connect it to the module, but the other end has two different size heads, a larger head and a smaller head, and they are different. The larger head is the receiver module, and the smaller head is the infrared transmitter module, so it's important you match these up with the receivers or the transmitter module that you're connecting to in the master system. There are also sticky pads you can use to attach these to your media devices that are included with the kit. Now we'll take a closer look at the transmitter matrix. On the front panel, starting on the left-hand side, you'll find a digital display that will show you which input is currently being sent to which output. It will also show you all the options available when you're in programming mode and allow you to step through those options using the up and down buttons. When you find the option that you want, tap the enter button to lock it in. To the right of that is an infrared receiver behind this little window that works with the included remote control. When you tap a button on here, it's going to generate a unique infrared code that's being sent to the unit. It'll pass through that window, picked up by the sensor behind it. Whatever changes you want made will be implemented. To the right of that is the power button. When you tap that, the unit will start an internal power on self-test where it's checking all the electronics inside. And once that test passes, that light will come on letting you know the unit's ready to use. To the right of that is a lock button. You make your input selections here and your output selections there. Once you're satisfied with those, hold that button for a couple of seconds, the light will come on, and that effectively locks all these buttons, which prevents somebody from coming along later and inadvertently tapping a button and changing your output selection. If you want to reactivate those buttons, just tap this again for a couple of seconds, the LED will go off, and all those buttons become active. You'll make your input selections here, your output selections there. Now you do have the option of sending the same input to all four outputs, and you can do that by quickly tapping that all button. If you want to reset these, tap the PTP button, and what that'll do is lock number 1 to A, number 2 to B, 3 to C, and 4 to D, and that's a great way to reset it. To the right of that are your programming buttons. You'll tap the menu button to get into programming mode. You'll make your selections using up and down. When you're satisfied with that selection, hit enter. On the bottom of the unit, you'll notice four rubber feet. Those are great for keeping it up off a surface and allowing air to ventilate underneath it to keep the electronics comfortable. They're also rubber, so it's going to keep it from sliding around on a surface. On either side of the unit, you'll notice ventilation slots that are there to keep the electronics inside at a comfortable temperature. On the back of the unit is where you'll make all your connections. Starting on the left, there's a grounding lug. You can connect that to earth ground to eliminate static or outside interference. Below that is where you connect up a PC because you can control this with the buttons on the front, the included remote control. You can also program it through a PC. So you've got a LAN connection as well as the cable connection for the included cable. Above that is an IR external. Now what that's used for is a lot of times these are located inside of cabinets or behind glass and the remote control can't go through the glass. So what you can do is connect up one of the IR blaster receivers to here, put it outside the cabinet, it'll function just like that receiver does on the front. To the right of that are the infrared inputs for the IR blaster kits, the IR outputs. Below that are your four inputs. These are HDMI connections, input one, two, three, and four. And here are your four outputs that go to your remote receivers. You'll connect the LAN cable up here to the remote receiver. You can connect an HDMI cable here locally if you want to use the local loopback function to be able to enjoy the content you're broadcasting to that remote location here locally. You can also send RS-232 connections to it as well by using this right here, this connection. To the right of that are the audio output options. You have a coaxial or an analog left and right for this output. Same for here and here and here. So you can actually take that audio that's being sent to the remote location and pass that along to a sound bar or to a home theater system for better quality audio. To the right of that is where the power cord plugs in, and that's pretty much it for the unit. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make to use this matrix with your own equipment. 
For this demonstration, I've set up four monitors that represent the four remote locations where we'll be broadcasting the content. I've also set up four media players that will act as my input devices. Each of them are displaying a different image to make it really easy to tell them apart. I have the matrix here. I have four remote receivers here. Now the first set of connections I'll make are to the back of the matrix, and I'll start with the media input devices. I have four HDMI cables connected here, and I'll plug those into HDMI input number one, input number two, input number three, and input number four. Now next I'll add power to the matrix. I plug that in on the floor, so I'll add that power connection here. Now the first thing this does when you add power is start an internal power on self-test where it's checking all the electronics to make sure everything is working fine. It's also checking the input resolution of all my media sources to make whatever adjustments are needed internally to send the best possible picture and audio downstream. Now we'll connect up the remote receivers. I have two HDMI cables connected to these two monitors which plug into the HDMI output port in the back of the receiver. There's one, there's two. I've got two more cables over here that I'll connect up to these two receivers. And once I make those connections, the only thing left is the LAN connection between the matrix and these remote locations. Now what's interesting is none of the remote receivers have a power supply, and that's because the matrix uses a technology called power over cable, where it actually sends the power over that same LAN cable while it's sending audio and video out to those remote locations. So the minute I make that LAN connection, they'll start powering up, going through a self-test, and eventually handshake with the matrix and start displaying output. So I've got two short LAN cables right here. I'll connect the first one up to output number four. We'll connect it up to this remote receiver right here. Now once I make that connection, you'll see the power indicator come on in the front. It's going through a power on self-test. It's handshaking with the matrix, and it should display the first image. There it is. Here's output number three. And again, same thing, power on self-test. Here's two more LAN cables. I'll go to output number two to this one. And then finally, output number one to the last remote receiver. And there you go. So again, it takes a couple of seconds for it to actually handshake, make adjustments for resolution, but you can see that we have four different displays that are up right now with the four different inputs on the front. Now you can switch any input to any output simply by touching the output button first and then selecting which input you want to go to that output. So to show you how that works, let me start with output number one or output number A and switch that to input number two. It'll blink out for a second, then it'll make that switch. There you go. Let's change output D to input number one, see what happens there. And boom, it changes. Now, if you want to reset them, you can hit the PTP button right down here, and it'll actually reset all of them. So if I click, let's see, yep. If I say output all PTP like that, it'll reset all the inputs and all the outputs back to the original. Now, I can also select one input to go to all four outputs if I choose to do that. And the way I'll do that is, collect, is hit the all button and then select whichever input I want it to switch to and it'll switch to that output. So you can actually see that the controls on the front give you a lot of flexibility to select which input goes to which output. You can also use the remote control, or you can do it programmatically from the back, and I'll show you how to do that in another clip. And it really is just that simple to get it working. I hope you found this overview of the UHD44-EX230-K 4x4 HDMI matrix switcher helpful. It really does provide a very simple way of sharing four different HDMI media sources with four remote locations at distances up to 100 meters away over a single Cat5e, Cat6, or Cat7 cable. And the fact that the product provides local loopback functionality for the video, as well as audio extraction capability for the audio, means that you can actually enjoy the content here at the primary location while simultaneously broadcasting it to your remote locations. The unit also features the infrared blaster kits that will capture the infrared signals from those remote locations and allow you to control the content you're watching. And the inclusion of power over cable technology means you only need to power up the transmitter module and all the remote modules will find their power over that LAN connection, which greatly simplifies the connections. Now, everything you need to get started is included with the kit and with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. So until next time, thanks for watching.